Hi folks, welcome to The Restoration Couple. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I built this oak pocket door for our porch project. So like many jobs, this was a bit of a design as you go type affair. First thing though, was to remove the old PVC door. Now this plastic door I actually installed only four or five years ago and it served its purpose but really it's out of place and I'd rather not have it there. Now the sliding door kit came as exactly that, just a kit in a tube, pretty simple stuff. It was around 50 pounds to buy. So actually the cost of setting one of these doors up isn't much more than just a normal hinged door. These are the stops either end of it and you can see where I'm managing to fit it. I've got that gap behind the soil pipe and it just made perfect sense for us to tuck in the door because a small porch, we don't really want two or three doors swinging in or out. First job was to fit those two brackets on the top of the door. That's what hangs onto the rollers. And with all these things, sliding doors especially, you can be sure that you'll be taking it on and off at least a dozen times during the build. Once I was happy with the track itself and that it was nice and level and things were rolling freely, we could move on to the wall and the boxing in. At this point, it made sense to get a good finish, a good coat of finish on there. There's nothing easier than a hanging door to finish because you haven't got anything touching anything so we could get a good coat all the way around in one hit. Then I moved on to cutting the wall, the boxing, uh, which would cover around that pipe and create the pocket for it to go into. Ordinarily, these are usually installed within a stud wall and you can create that pocket using a frame kit. In our situation, we were actually hanging it from the, the ceiling because it was a lower ceiling and we had a step and all that makes sense a little bit later in the video. I used some small strips of oak as offcuts to create a little fixing point top and bottom for this box in section and that way I could secure everything as one piece, slide it in and out whilst I was setting up the door and then just attach it to those at the final point before painting. Now the key here was to make sure that everything was going to end up flush with the leading edge of the door. I set the MDF sub panel, I guess you call it, back by 18 mil from the end of the door because I knew I was going to be using an 18, 19 mil piece of oak uh, over the top of that to cap it as the door lining. And now it's time to look at the hardware. Now apart from conventional locks and handles, you'll find that a lot of hardware like this doesn't come with any instructions for fitting, so you kind of have to use your noggin a bit and just work with it. First thing was to use the router set to the depth of that front plate and I could take that down, make sure it fit and by flipping it over you can pretty much get a good feel for whether it's going to sit in there nicely or not. Once 
Once I was happy with that, and I had to hog out the middle section, which houses the kind of inset uh, part of the handle. That just was the case of going through with the router bit set a little bit deeper and then squared off and dug out a little bit with the chisel to make sure it fit. Then we're on to the next fussy bit of hardware, which was the little hidden catch which flips away when the door isn't in use. That again needed something similar, but it also had to have a, a deeper hole to allow the, it to house once it was sprung back in. Next job was to cut the groove for the guide in the bottom and I started off with the small router and sure enough that router bit just sheared. I was being too greedy trying to do it in one pass but it really does have to be a 6mm groove to get it nice and snug. I couldn't find one to replace it, not easily and not that day but it struck me that I had a 6mm groove cutter which is kind of for making panel doors. Never actually used it before but in the bigger router I was able to take that along it's not on center because it wouldn't go to that depth but that's fine I just adjusted where the guide was and it got me out of a sticky situation right we're slowly getting there with our pocket door project the door is in the hardware is pretty much there now I'm going to be installing two bits of door lining either side of it so hopefully it sits flush and there's almost an invisible line between the two or a shadow line at least. So I've picked up uh, a, a length of white oak which is very similar in grain to the end of the, the door so hopefully things are going to match up fairly closely. If you were getting super fancy and doing things super custom then you could actually make up the door or, or lip the door perhaps with the same piece so if you imagine getting a wide board you could cut you could basically make the grain completely continue through but um but i'm not going to do that all right let's get these counter sunk ready for screws and then i'm going to make some plugs up to match now this is kind of an access panel really, if I ever had to get a sliding door out I probably would have to remove this. Um, that's why I'm going to screw and plug them and I'll just make the plugs quite shallow so if I ever had to I could just drill them out very easily. Um, rather than using some sort of plastic cap over the screws. I'm hoping that we shouldn't really ever need to get the door out but you know it's, it's easier to think about these things now than in a few years time when I'm kind of crowbarring something out. Now we're getting to the fussy bit and I managed to dig out some of the honey coloured Osmo which we use on our doors which just help the two different types of oak blend in a little bit better. And the door is back off again. So the, the lock was finally sent, it's a special type of lock for a sliding door and that was the last bit of hardware to fit. This really was a bit of uh, fussy hardware and also quite fiddly. I'm actually going to do a separate video on this so this is a more of an overview of what that entails.
pocket door is finished and it's secret enough, it's hidden away enough that it really does open up this space. Now there's a few reasons which I might have mentioned earlier in the video that we wanted to go this route. One was I had that space there behind that stack, that soil pipe that was there. It seemed just too good to, to waste to not use that space. The other thing is we've got a, a porch here which links two rooms and in that porch we need three external doors. Now because the porch is uh, a porch as far as uh, building regulations goes, we need to have an external door between it and the house in both places. So this ticks that box and I did check that they'd be happy with this and of course it is a, a certified external door in that it's got double glazing. The locks are all external, five lever uh, locks and uh, as far as draft proofing goes it doesn't need to be quite as much as the actual external because there's no uh, thermally we're fully insulated this porch and it's got a heating source but I'm going to be able to put some uh, draft proof strip at the bottom and uh, and also up on the sliding mechanism at the top and that just needs a little bit of a closing off trim piece either side so you don't really see any of the the mechanism up there I've got my helper back any of the hardware mechanisms things like that I will try and link to down in the description uh, they're from a few different places but if I can find all the links then I will put them down below um, also these doors ah. hi also the oak um, double glazed doors I bought a van load of them uh, when I was working out what I was going to do at the back of the house and I've still got I think three of each size spare so I'm trying to sell those if anyone does need a double glazed oak door and they're in the southwest then let me know but there we go i'll leave the video here if you would like to join us on patreon i will sit that link down below we've had a whole host of new followers on there which is really great and we've got some more bonus content coming that way soon we've got a little project which i've picked up some timber for this week which is an oak feature wall light on here that may or may not involve some diy blacksmithing i've also installed a column radiator in the porch area which is an electric column uh, radiator and I will be featuring that in another video. But apart from that, we're almost done and super exciting that I've almost placed the order for all the joinery and uh, beams for the workshop build. So what are we gonna say? What are we gonna say? But remember, if you can, do it yourself and we'll see you next time. Final question, who <laughs> has more hair? <laughs> uh, is it you? Have you caught me up? I think you have. Rubbish. Rubbish. <laughs> You're winning. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>